You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. We welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Nationwide. All a part of Veterans Week on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. The deepening cold of autumn descending on williams Bryce Stadium. Giant killer Appalachian State from the mountains of Boone aiming its slingshot tonight at South Carolina. It's senior night in Columbia, and the Gamecocks need to win two of their final three games to become bowl eligible. An ish drop alongside former Pitt quarterback John Kinjemi. Chris Budden is down in the field. When App State plays a power five, there is one memory that comes to mind. Well, it does. You think about the big house, 2007, when they go on the road and beat Michigan and probably puts them on the map, not only locally, but nationally. This blocked kick late in the football game secures a two-point victory, and everybody knows about Appalachian State around the country. App State's first power five win since the Michigan win came in week four against a North Carolina team that, oh, by the way, beat South Carolina and against Power 5 teams since moving up to the FBS, App State has given these big teams all they can handle. They were close last year against Penn State. They'd go to overtime and lose, but you mentioned the September 21 victory on the road against North Carolina. That's their landmark win this season. App State, an underdog tonight. Would it be a surprise if they won? No. South Carolina is a team that is banged up, especially on offense. They're one constant. They're Desmond Hume has been number 89, Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards is a playmaker, and really he's been the consistent athletic twitch guy on the, on the perimeter for this offense. He's the one healthy skill player that consistently produces for this off offense of South Carolina. The plan tonight, get him the ball in space. Get it to him early and often so he can run after catch and make some spectacular plays on the perimeter for an offense that has struggled this season. And Chris, this could be a very special night for Mr. Edwards. It is. It's already been because it is senior night, but also because he's in reach of a couple more records. The two to be on the lookout for are their career receiving yards and career receiving touchdowns. Now, the guy whose records he's toppling is Alshon Jeffrey, the wide receiver that's been in the NFL since 2012. The two have a friendship, and Brian Edwards told me that Jeffrey's uh, – advice to him has been stay consistent take care of his body i talked to edwards this week and i asked him is there one record that means more than the other and he said no i just want all of them he's going to have his opportunities offensive coordinator brian mcclendon told us if edwards isn't tired when he leaves the stadium this coaching staff didn't do its job That means even if Alabama loses, they could still be in the top four. They've made it a game in the second half. It's the SEC on ESPN. It's South Carolina. It's Appalachian State. It's starting to feel a bit like winter, but it's a sandstorm at williams Bryce. Toss and deferred. And the kick fielded at the nine yard line by Jamie Robinson. And dropped right at the 25. 
This South Carolina offense has been beset by injuries all season long. Starting quarterback Jake Bentley suffered a season-ending foot injury in week one. The O-line has been a revolving door. Nine different starters. Right tackle is where they've had three different starters. The running back and receiving core has been hit hard by injuries. And last week, the number two tight end, Nick Muse, suffered a torn ACL. Rico Dowdle is back for South Carolina after missing two games with a sprained right knee. He'll begin in the backfield with the true freshman QB, Ryan Holinsky. And Holinsky on first down will check down and complete. And across the 30-yard line is Brian Edwards, who else? Chasing records tonight. Coming off a 14-catch game, a career high a week ago, as we look at Chick-fil-A impact players. And before we do that, we've got a man down for App State. Well, you mentioned getting the football to Brian Edwards. We talked about him in the open. 47 straight games with at least one reception. The goal is to get it to him often and early in space so he can run after catch and have those opportunities. For App State on defense, it's Akeem Davis Gather. He's a quick, instinctive linebacker. He's the team leader on that defense, and he'll make plays all over the field for App State. The South Carolina coaching staff had a lot of praise for App State's defense. They said, it's an SEC defense and not a middle-of-the-pack SEC defense as Elijah Girasuba gets helped off the field. There's not a lot of depth on this App State defensive line. In fact, of the six players listed on there, two deep, four are walk-ons. And you want to be able to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage with as much pulling of the guards and get out on the perimeter for running that South Carolina likes to do. And it's going to hurt when you miss impact players along that front seven for Appalachian State tonight. South Carolina getting another reinforcement on offense. That's right tackle Dylan Wanham. He missed the last five games with an ankle injury. Not quite at 100%, but better than what South Carolina had been throwing out there on the whole line. In the month of November, I don't know if there's anybody at 100%, especially on this football team for the Gamecocks. This offensive line has been a rotation of players, and it's good to see 79 Dylan Wanham back in the lineup. They have confidence in what he can do at the point of attack. Now they will be without Tavian Feaster, their leading rusher. Shai Smith still out. Josh Van got hurt last week. He's out for at least the rest of the regular season. Second down and two. Here's Dowdle. Breaks free and picks up a first down. That's a good sign early in each to see this offensive line and Dowdle with the vision. He had the patience to wait on those two pulling guards, kind of hide behind that offensive line, wait for a crease, and move the chains early in the game. Two tight end look here on first and ten. It's Dowdle again, and wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Fair, the middle linebacker, with the stop. Good recognition by that linebacking core. Really, App State and their defensive coordinator, Ted Roof, talked about pressuring the line of scrimmage. They want to do it on the early downs and put more pressure, apply more pressure to the passing game of South Carolina. To Karrion Joyner, the second string QB, played some receiver earlier this year, is in the game. And Dowdle tripped after a loss, so it'll bring up third and long against this App State defense, which is the best in the Sun Belt. And again, they don't play the same SEC level competition, but their overall numbers amongst the best nationally. Very good nationally, 18th nationally. And when you look at what South Carolina does on offense, they're 11th in their own conference. This is a critical down early in the game. Brian Edwards at the top of your screen. Could be a free play. Olinsky takes a shot downfield. Incomplete for the freshman Xavier Leggett making his second career start. And that's going to be offsides on App State. Looked like that was Demetrius Taylor. Offside on the defense, number 38. Five-yard penalty, replay, third down. I think that was 48 and Demetrius Taylor. 
Yeah, he wanted to get that early jump on Alinsky to try to apply pressure in the pocket, but it makes it a lot easier on third down to convert a third and seven. Can't take away your aggressiveness if you're Appalachian State here on third and seven. You still want to come after the young quarterback. Four-man rush. Olinsky slings one. He's got Edwards. Edwards broke the initial tackle in plus territory into South Carolina first down. Great pass protection. Good decision from the pocket and an accurate football to your best playmaker in space. That's a recipe for success for South Carolina. And now to carry on Joyner will be the quarterback on this play. Holinsky split wide at the top of your screen. Joyner will run. An outstanding athlete takes it close to the 40-yard line. I was at practice on Thursday, and Joyner was getting a ton of reps and a lot of this stuff. Coming in for a play, staying in at wide receiver, then morphing into quarterback. He was the number three QB to begin the season, moved to wide out with the injury to Bentley, had to move back to quarterback. Well, that was part of the plan. We talked to offensive coordinator Brian McClendon. This is going to happen throughout this football game. Deshaun Fenwick able to move the chains. Fenwick did not have a carry all season prior to last week, and with all the injuries at running back, it was time for his close-up a week ago, 18 carries, 100-plus yards. Welcome to football, right? Welcome to big-time football. That was an unbelievable start for Fenwick against Vandy last week. He did it inside the tackles. He did it in the open field, and he'll see a lot of playing time tonight again. He deserves it. Dowdle now back in there. Chavis Dawkins in motion. Dowdle on the draw. And he is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Akeem Davis Gaither with the TFL. We talked about him. He's one of our impact players. He comes right outside of the block. He beats the pulling guard and tackle around the line of scrimmage and gets that tackle for loss on first down. He's a playmaker. He, he's one of those guys that leads by example. Last week, 16 total tackles. Holinsky to throw, under pressure, steps up, faked out fair. And Holinsky slides just shy of the marker, not known to be a runner, it's third and short. No, and this is a guy that's not 100%. We talk about the offense of South Carolina, a little pressure in the pocket, a pump fake, and then there's gr green grass. I don't know why you slide, maybe you get another five yards, but probably because he's not 100%, doesn't want to take on that tackle. Dowdle into the teeth of that defense. And it's going to be just short. So fourth down for South Carolina. And an early decision. I think, Will Muschamp, I think they're the going to go for it. Yeah. I think that decision has been made. I, I would like to see Joyner maybe come in the game at quarterback, potentially on short yardage. But he was about to, then he came back out of the game. Well, there was no hesitation from head coach Will Muschamp. That offense stayed on the field. They're going to go for it here on this opening drive. I think it's a great call. Play clock at seven. The give is to Kevin Harris. Harris trying to surge forward. And I think he's going to get it based on the spot. It is a first down for South Carolina. I think it was that second effort by Harris. He was initially stopped. It looked like at or behind the line of scrimmage. No surge. Boy, the pad level that time for App State. And that defensive front gets underneath South Carolina. Joyner coming right back into the game. Seven for South Carolina. There is a flag at the end of the play. This officiating crew is going to talk it over, but that was a very late flag. It looked like South Carolina was trying to get to the line to snap the football. Lee Hendrick is the Lee Hedrick is the head referee. The 
Eli Drinkwitz, the head coach for App State. There is no right. foul for illegal substitution on the previous play. First down, South Carolina. This is where you see a lot of man coverage, and for me, Brian Edwards might be your number one target here. If they don't roll a safety over the top of 89, he's going to be to the short side of the field. Boy, you sure like to get it to your playmaker in space and let him win a one-on-one -on -one battle. Joyner, designed quarterback run. And into the clutches of Caleb Sperlin, a former walk-on. We told you this D-line, while there's some talent up front, especially with Demetrius Taylor, a lot of former walk-ons there and not a ton of depth. And Deer Suba had to come out of the game on this drive. No, the starting 11 has to get it done for Appalachian State. The key now, now that South Carolina line is rolling a little bit on this opening drive, can you force a field goal opportunity, keep the Gamecocks out of the end zone? And this will be the 13th play of this opening drive. Blitz off the edge. Holinsky gets rid of it. The ball is tipped incomplete. Intended for Edwards, Desmond Franklin, and all-conference safety last year broke it up. I like the thought, trying to get squeeze in that quick slant on the inside to your best playmaker, but a better play by Franklin. He gets that left hand on the football. That's just good coverage on second down. So this will be the 14th play of the drive. Only 52 yards. It's taken up about six minutes of clock. Here's the blitz, picked up, off the hands of Edwards, fourth down. You won't see that happen much this evening. That's a wide open, wide receiver. The guy you want to get the football to in Brian Edwards, who's a sure-handed receiver. He leads all receivers in the conference with receptions, but he'd love to have that one back. That was a fastball that he needed to come down with. So Parker White now with a 41-yard field goal attempt. The kick is good. South Carolina picks up a field goal on a 15-play opening drive. The Gamecocks take the early lead on senior night thanks to the foot of Parker White. By Drinkwitz, 36 years young, the sixth youngest head coach in the FBS. Will Muschamp in his fourth season at South Carolina. He's been to a bowl game the last three. He has to go two and one down the stretch and the schedule is unforgiving. App State, one of the better group of five teams in the country. Then on the road at Texas A&M and then Clemson waiting in the regular season finale. Yeah, they need this victory tonight. Darrington Evans for Appalachian State, a dangerous return man, shows off why as he takes it across the 40-yard line and outstanding starting field position for the Mountaineers. That's exactly what Evans needed to do to tee up his offense. Good explosion, but the quarterback in Zach Thomas, this is a guy that feels more comfortable in the offense. He's able to get the football out on the perimeter. He's the Sun Belt Player of the Year last season, and I think he just looks comfortable. You talk about doing things in his career in the offseason in the passing academy for the Manning Passing Academy. He came in second, so this is a guy that knows how to get things done under pressure. And there is Evans getting the carry, a pickup of four. A running back who Coach Rinkwood says could play for anybody. And Eli Drinkwood's background, he was at NC State as the offensive coordinator for Dave Doran before coming to Boone from Raleigh. Got his start in the SEC, in fact, as a GA for Gus Malzahn. He's been around a, a different styles of, of head coaches, but I think he's his own guy now that he's the head coach and finally getting to do things he wants to do offensively. Thomas will throw it downfield, incomplete third down. Kevin Connors in the studio. Yeah. 
LSU should be number one in the next college football playoff rankings. Bama, with their valiant comeback, should still remain in the top four. I agree. Marcus Williams cuts it back, and he's going to be awfully close to the first down marker. Ernest Jones, the Mike linebacker, with the tackle. And it is a first down, no measurements needed. Anytime you're trying to answer a score with a score, it's important to move the chains when you get the field position that you have after that explosive kick return. The officials will look at this. You can review the spot of the ball if the goal line or a first down is in question. Will step aside for the official review. App State in South Carolina territory. ESPN College Football is presented by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And in part by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Offers available for a limited time. Senior night for 25 South Carolina seniors, including Jake Bentley, whose dad is on the coaching staff, and the quarterback who got injured in week one and has been out for the season. Will Muschamp told us a decision will be made. They'll sit down, figure out where to go next month. And, you know, you feel bad for an injury happening like that in week number one. You want to be able to turn the tide. You want to be able to be important for your team. But now you go fast forward. you got a freshman that replaces you, and you've got some experience, and now they're going for it here on fourth down. Does App State? App State will go for it. Thomas will throw down the middle of the field. He's got Colin Reed, the all-conference tight end. Eli Drinkwitz told us in a game like this, as the underdog, App State's going to play with house money. Absolutely. It's a free shot at a win. You go for it on fourth and very short. You find your tight end, Colin Reed, down the middle. That's a good play fake, number one. Raise up, throw the football, get it out of your hand, and now you've got a little bit of momentum going here on this opening drive. Two tight end look, Reed and Pearson in the game. They motion to the right. Evans, the running back. And here's Evans. Makes his way past one of the best defensive lines in all of college football. As we look at Chick-fil-A impact players, when App State has it. Well, on the ground, it's going to be Evans. He's a guy that only needs small creases in the run game, and he'll need to find those against a strong front seven from South Carolina. And you speak about strong players up front. Don't look any farther than 6'6", 3'10". That's Javion Kinlaw. He's a Javon guy that's Kinlaw. Javon Kinlaw. He's very strong up front. He's disruptive, and he gets vertical against opposing offensive linemen. Yeah, he looks like Colossus and Cleats. Thomas, speed option. Evans broke the Great initial effort. tackle inside the 10. First and goal for Appalachian State, a gain of nine. What an effort by Evans. He's got speed and vision and explosiveness when he gets out on the perimeter. Just an option to the wide side of the field. And he's going to be able to break that tackle there, stay on his feet, and get a couple more. Thomas, design QB, run. He's taken down in the backfield with big 6'6", Kinlaw approaching. That's the vertical and the strength you get from this front seven from Carolina. They do a good job of rerouting running backs, and that time they rerouted the quarterback. That was sort of an odd formation, too, with three receivers to the boundary. Yes. Not a lot of room. Thomas Hennigan now, the wide receiver, on the Wildcat, trying a little trickeration. Evans on the edge. And shoved out of bounds. It'll bring up third and goal. And for Appalachian State to be successful today, they're going to try to win the perimeter. Yes, they need to do it with speed. They don't want to go and try to lean on big body against big body in between the tackles. We've seen different formations. We've seen different guys take the snap. And it looks like Evans got a little nicked up at the end of the play. We'll step aside.
Darrington Evans went far into the Carolina sideline on the last run before we stepped aside through the cheerleaders and it looked like he bumped into something it seemed fine after shaking it off Appalachian State has already lost two running backs for the season and two good ones in Camp Peoples and Datrick Harrington and this is a very good football team once they cross the opposition 20 yard line 79 percent is the touchdown ratio 30 touchdowns on the season one of the best red zone teams in the country Reed the tight end motions Williams in a tailback pressure from South Carolina and Thomas just throws it away fourth down there's the pressure you can expect on third down from this front seven Kinlaw and Sterling and Quantum, they do such a nice job of getting upfield and forcing the throwaway on third down. And now a penalty marker down. I'm not so sure that Thomas might have been outside of the tackle box or the ball may not have crossed the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten to the wide side of the field outside the tackle box. I'm not so sure the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding on the offense number 12. Though he was outside the tackle box, the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, and there was no receiver in the area. There will be a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. So that makes this a longer field goal attempt for Chandler Staten. And it also moves the field goal, John, to the right hash. And this That's is not where they want to because be. Because they are comfortable yeah. with state from the left hash or the center spot, not from the right hash. You mentioned the longer kick where the ball is spotted. This is a pressure kick early in this football game. You want to be able to tie it at three, get, keep that momentum you have going offensively. A 40-yarder for the tie. And the kick is good. Appalachian State won its first seven games lost last time out against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern lost today too, which means App State is back in the driver's seat. Friends Day weekend and we like to salute all our nation's veterans past and present. We take a look at some of the courageous soldiers from around the globe proudly showing off their school pride and we thank you for your service to our great nation. From williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Senior night for South Carolina App State. Looking for its second Power 5 win of the season. A short sky kick. And South Carolina will begin at the 32. Will Register fielded it for the Gamecocks. Anish, you talked about all the injuries at the open of the game and talked about guys moving around. I think it's difficult for a young quarterback as a freshman coming in after the first game of the season and having all those guys not being the same faces, the same numbers you can depend on. And that's why I think you rely a little bit more on Edwards tonight at home to get this important victory. Olenski, the freshman out of California, finds his tight end Markway, who's across midfield as we check in with Chris. And it appears that defensive end Elijah Dirasuba is not going to go back in the game. He does not have his helmet. When he went in the injury tent, was in a ton of pain, his hands over his eyes. They gave him some crutches, but he waved him off, but is still having trouble putting any weight on that left leg. Are we told the App State not deep on the defensive line. Markway has to come out of the game. South Carolina lost its number two tight end for the season last week. Off play action, incomplete for Edwards. And early on, John, we're seeing Brian Edwards get targeted quite a bit. Well, that's the plan. You have to get it to your playmaker in space. And the easiest way to do it is off that little RPO play action fake and get the ball out of your hand quickly if you're the quarterback, Kalinsky. So I think the plan's there, the execution lacking just a little bit right now. Edwards about 60 yards away from the school's all-time receiving record, receiving yardage record. He already has the all-time receptions record. It just adds to it here, and it's third down for South Carolina. 
Well, the passing game so far is going to go through Brian Edwards, but five different players from South Carolina had a rush on that first possession. That's also a good sign. And now Edwards limping off the field, and that's the one guy on this offense who cannot afford to lose. They're thin at wide receiver. They've got Trey Adkins in right now, a walk-on number 35. Dowdle motions. Holinsky throws. Completes. It's Atkins down the sideline. How about the walk-on? Offensive coordinator Brian McClendon told us he wears 35 in practice. I have no idea what he wears in the game. <laughs> that was pretty good. I wrote three different numbers down for Trey trying to get the boards ready tonight. But he, no doubt, they call his number on the field, and he makes a huge play to get the football down to the 14-yard line. They've been so thinned out at wide receiver. They've used Bailey Hart recently, another walk-on. Jay, Jay Urich, Urich, the third-string right. quarterback. Joiner, of course, has seen time. Here's the toss. Dowdle taken down in the backfield. Sean Jolly, the cornerback. Well, that's a good aggressive tackle on first down coming off the edge. I think Dowdle needs to press that inside. He took it outside, and the tight end is trying to kick. Markway's trying to kick that defender outside. I think that's more on the running back, but a good aggressive play by Jolly. Chavis Dawkins brought down by the ankles. And it's Josh Thomas, the leader, the unquestioned leader of this team and this defense making the stop. It is. He comes out of the secondary. He's a sure tackler. Defensive coordinator Ted Root called him the glue that holds this defense together. Well, the glue and the rest of the Appalachian State defenders right here want to force another field goal opportunity. That's the goal tonight. They want to bend, but force field goal opportunities. Keep the Gamecocks out of the end zone. Two walk-ons in at receiver. Hart and Atkins, who's in motion. Four-man rush. Holinsky's pass in traffic. And it's brought in by Chavis Dawkins. Two catches today after just five, or rather six all season entering the night. And that's two passes so far. Demetrius Taylor, the defensive end, has been able to get his hands on to disrupt the passing and the flow of this offense for South Carolina. It was short of the marker, so it's a fourth down, and Parker White on for his second field goal attempt of the night. This one from 25. Two field goals by White have given South Carolina a 6-3 lead, but John, that's got to be a win for this App State defense. Absolutely, it's a win for this defense. You want to come out and keep the opposition out of the end zone and keep your team in it early, especially on the road, only down three points. Well, the offensive injuries list is a significant one for South Carolina. Bentley got hurt at the end of the opener against UNC. He's done for the season. Tavian Feaster, the Clemson transfer, had been their leading rusher. He tweaked his groin last week. He's out today. Shai Smith, one of their top receivers, he's missing his second straight game. Josh Van broke his hand last week. He won't come back unless South Carolina goes to a bowl game, and that's not for certain. Dawkins, who had a couple of catches on that drive, has been banged up. Nick Muse, the number two tight end, it goes on and on and on, especially earlier in the year. They had injuries on the offensive line, had to move pieces, and you talked about it. That's hard for a freshman quarterback. It is. It's difficult to have any continuity if you're a quarterback trying to get some rhythm in this offense. Even more why it would be significant for this Brian Edwards injury. He is still inside the medical tent. From what I could tell, they were looking at his left leg, but he is still in there. As soon as I give more information, I'll let you know. There's no way around it. App State is too good of a team where if you don't have Brian Edwards, you're in a lot of trouble tonight. That's the only explosive player they have on the perimeter. And if he's not able to come back in the football game, it applies 
so much pressure to the running game and the quarterback. Zach Thomas, Sunbelt Player of the Year a season ago. Throws it back, and he's got Evans. Evans is free across the 45-yard line down near midfield. Jamie Robinson finally brought him down after a gain of 24. Just a little throwback. This is well-designed in the backfield by Appalachian State. It's full flow to the wide side of the field. Zach Thomas finds his running back wide open. It's two on one to the boundary, and you make a guy miss on the edge, and then you just use that speed and acceleration to get the football up close to the 50-yard line. And App State continuing to attack the edges. This is Thomas. He'll keep it and into Gamecock territory. Ernest Jones, the tackle. I think it's important for App State on first down to get positive yardage. You don't want to be behind the chains and allow that defensive front to kind of get their cleats in the grass and come after you on second or third and long. So good call so far by Eli Drinkwitz, their head coach, and the way the offense is flowing right now. It's keeping South Carolina guessing. Marcus Williams. Not much space. Jones, part of the crew that drove him back. There is a flag down. Could be a face mask against South Carolina. During the play, they're offsetting fouls. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number eight. Personal foul, chop block on the offense, an illegal high low combination. Those penalties will offset. We we'll replay second down. Well, you love the aggressiveness, but you don't want to. You don't want the face mask, and that one was on Wanham. One of those. One of those team captains for the Gamecocks. Ryan Newsel and Victor Johnson, the guilty parties for the Mountaineers, as quarter number one comes to an end. The South Carolina coaching staff told us they would have their hands full with Appalachian State. That's been the story through 15 minutes. All field goals, and the Gamecocks up by three. Columbia, this is the SEC on ESPN. Appalachian State with the ball in South Carolina territory. Raekwon Anderson, the running back. And this is a Mountaineers team since moving up to the FBS in 2014. That's won 22 road games. Only Oklahoma, Clemson, Boise State, and Ohio State have won more. That's a pretty good list to be on. And this is a, a quality football team that loves to step up in terms of competition and be able to get road victories or at least be in football games and threaten. They started 7-0, lost last time out. Thomas chased, throws it to the far sideline, Anderson, and he's out of bounds, it's third down. Nice ad lib by Zach Thomas being able to flush away from pressure, find it a viable outlet and turn a negative, a potential negative play into a positive. I think he looks really comfortable and confident, not only tonight, but just running this offense throughout the season. This is a guy that has the poise. He's a quiet leader, but he's a competitor. And I think competitors find ways to win, especially in tough environments on the road. Thomas on third down, incomplete. Intended for Malik Williams, who's coming off the best game of his career. And the punt team will come on. Jamie Robinson in tight coverage. The freshman nickel corner comes in in the slot. Really breaks right stride for stride with the receiver. Nowhere to throw the football on the outside for Malik Williams. And then the late hit, the low hit. Looked like Zach Thomas was limping on the sidelines. He is holding that right leg. 
Leggett, the freshman, waits at his 10. Subac to punt it away. Good punt. Fair catch called for and made at about the 13-yard line. Brian Edwards got banged up on South Carolina's last drive. Chris, is there an update? Yeah, he's currently out of the tent. They have put a brace on his left knee. He's on the bike right now. I was watching him try and sprint, try and cut. He's holding it right now. You can tell it's still really uncomfortable. This is an offense beset by injuries. Edwards has played in every game. He leads the SEC in receptions. He's one of the best receivers in school history. And coming off a game where he caught 14 passes for over 130 yards. Here's Deshaun Fenwick gobbled up in the backfield. DeMarco Jackson the first to get there. And in Tuesday's App State defensive meeting, Ted Roof, the D coordinator, said, raise your hand if you guys were recruited by South Carolina. Jackson was the only guy to raise his hand. And then Roof said, put your hand down. They backed off after you got hurt. Jackson put his hand down. That's what they've been selling to the locker room all week. There's Joyner. It'll bring up third down near the 20. Keep the chip is the motto for Appalachian State. Play like the underdog with that boulder on your shoulder. And the message from the coaching staff has been, hey, you play in North Carolina, you play in South Carolina. These guys didn't want you. They didn't think you were good enough. Carry that anger into the game. You have to find a way to get the edge in a game where you're outmanned or outgunned or maybe a little undersized. Appalachian State has a lot of players on this roster from North and South Carolina. This game means a lot to them. And More they're playing like the roster. it. On third down, Holinsky to the air. Nearly intercepted. It'll bring up fourth down. And the near interception is significant because Holinsky now has the school record for most consecutive passes without a pick. Well, he would have loved to have got that conversion on third down. This is a well-thrown ball, well-placed, but a better breakup on the outside by Desmond Franklin, the free safety. 178 straight passes without an interception. One better than Connor Shaw. But it's a three and out for South Carolina. And Joseph Charlton, one of the best punters in the country to kick. Thomas Hennigan watches this one bounce. He'll let it roll, thought about it. And South Carolina will down it at the 31. A 50-yard punt by Charlton. App State back on offense. Since 2012, the Sun Belt has beaten the SEC four times. Louisiana Monroe did it to Arkansas back in 2012. Georgia Southern beat Florida, a team coached by Will Muschamp in 2013. The game where the two Florida players infamously were blocking each other. South Alabama in 2016 in Starkville, and then Troy two years ago knocking off LSU. That was a very good Troy team, though. It was, and this is a very good Appalachian State team going up against a depleted offense for South Carolina. On the fly sweep. And that's Darrington Evans, one of the national leaders in all-purpose yards for a gain of 11. He's dangerous when he gets to the second level because he runs like a wide receiver in space. He has that type of speed and vision in the open field. He was a big Percy Harvin fan growing up. He's a high school wideout. He still looks like he can shake in the open field. Marcus Williams. Finds some running room and a yard shy of the 50. Williams again. And ran into a roadblock. Third down. It's a good tackle by Daniel Fennell. We see a lot of substitution for the Gamecocks defensively. They want fresh players out there on this third down. They want to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. 
And that means some of the big bodies up front need to create some type of penetration and anticipate this snap count. Thomas throws. He's got Williams on the slant. And a first down, Jamie Robinson with the tackle. Catch and throw. It's tough to defend when you're in that shotgun, and Thomas is so good at identifying where he wants to go with the football. If it's a mismatch, and it was at the, off the snap with Williams, just winning inside across the face of Robinson. Malik Williams, a high school quarterback from Chester, South Carolina, about an hour north. This might be an opportunity for a trick place coming down here somewhere. Here is Evans, second level. And a nice pickup on first down. Kevin Connors in the studio again. That's going to be a good matchup during the college basketball season as well. Darrington Evans moves the chains. T.J. Brunson, South Carolina's leading tackler with the stop. And each for a team that wanted to win on the outside, on the perimeter, they're doing a pretty good job going north and south over the tackles right now. How are they doing it? They're getting good movement with their offensive line, and I don't think there's any hesitation by Evans or Anderson or Williams being able to run the football with authority. Evans led the Sun Belt in rushing a season ago, averaging almost seven yards a carry tonight. He'll get another chance. It's a reverse. Williams, the high school quarterback, and that's through the hands of Zach Thomas. There are flags down. Well, partner, I was a couple plays too early, but it felt like it somewhere around that area, somewhere for a double pass, try to get the crowd out of this football game and seize the moment. Strong premonition by you. <laughs> And that's a big part of what App State likes to do. Well, it's a good area of the field to do it in. You know, you get a defense that you're running it, you're running it, you're pounding it over the tackles, and your eyes get locked in the backfield. After the play, they're offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on Appalachian State, number 58. Unsportsmanlike conduct on South Carolina, number three. This is both players' first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Number 58's helmet came off as a result of this foul. He is allowed to remain in the game. It will be second down. Because the helmet came off because of a penalty. So not Ryan Newsel, but Bear Hunter called for the unsportsmanlike. Yeah, it looked like Hunter wanted to get that last shot on Kinlaw. And they kind of had words and the helmet came off, so he's going to be able to stay in the football game. But most importantly, I would think for South Carolina defensively, you have to find an answer at the line of scrimmage. Because right now, Eli Drinkwitz in this offense, the way he's calling it, they're going downhill with authority. And we have not seen as much tempo from App State as they usually deploy. Evans around the edge and driven out of bounds after a short gain. Officials getting in there to break it up. It'll bring up third down. Well, that could have easily been 15 yards on Sherrod Green. It looked like he hit Evans on the perimeter. After he had given up, it looked like he was coasting to the sidelines. You still have to protect yourself as a running back, but that's two or three yards on the sidelines. I think, I think Green got away with a late hit that should have been a penalty app state 49 percent on third down for the season one for four tonight thomas steps up over the middle low throw incomplete 
Intended for Malik Williams. It's fourth down. And now, do you kick a long field goal? It appears App State will. That's a good defensive stand by South Carolina. It looked like Appalachian State was moving the football at will. But that third down stop is going to force a, a kick of close to 50 yards. A 47-yarder, Staten, 4 of 4 from beyond 40 this season. And for his career, as long as 53. So this is within his range. And it's good. A battle of the kickers in Columbia. Two field goals apiece. Staten. Bingo. We're tied at six. ESPN, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. ESPN College Football, brought to you by AT&T and USAA. Let's thank our veterans. Join us at usaa.com slash Veterans Day. Will Muschamp taking his team to Fort Jackson before fall camp every year. The players put through the ringer by Army officers at the base. The motto there, victory starts here. Tonight a stalemate, 6-6. Middle of the second quarter, South Carolina to receive after another field goal by App State. Leggett to the 21. Last week, South Carolina offensive coordinator Brian McClendon moved from the field up to the booth. He wanted quarterbacks coach Dan Werner down on the field so he can better communicate with true freshman quarterback Ryan Halinski and McClendon's had a hard job this year with all the injuries and moving parts on offense. Will Muschamp downplayed the severity of so many injuries. McClendon didn't, and he said every week you start by saying who's available, That's right. then you got to figure out the game plan. Your offense changes probably every Monday or Sunday night. Rico Dowdle, or rather to carry on Joyner. And he's bumped, and we get a flag. Might be a late hit. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense number 24. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Akeem Davis Gaither, the best player on this Appalachian State football team, called for the flag. What wasn't called last series against South Carolina is now called against Appalachian State, and that's just a not a headsy play because you're You've, your defense is rolling. You feel like you've got some confidence there, and you're giving free yardage to the Gamecocks on offense. Dowdle searching for the edge. It's denied. A short game, second and nine. And each the thing I'm so surprised about is how well Appalachian State defensively they run. They run and tackle in space, and this is a good offensive line that moves very well. I think they're filling in the gaps, and beating South Carolina to the punch. And here they are again. It's going to be third and long, and Chris still no Brian Edwards on the field for the Gamecocks. No, he is standing at the front of the sidelines with his helmet on. His teammates asked him how he's doing. He said, I'm okay. Again, he has a left a brace on his left knee, but when I watch him run, he has yet to look 100%. To give you an idea what he means to the offense, he came into the game with 62 catches. Every other available player on South Carolina's roster has combined for 54. Yeah, it's just so one-sided in terms of availability because he's been the only skill athlete that's not been on injured reserve, it seems like, this season. Three-man rush. Olinsky steps up. Over the middle, incomplete, nearly picked off the tip by Trey Cobb. And it's fourth down. Boy, good initial thought by Helinski sliding and moving up in the pocket. The only thing was he didn't locate it perfectly. If he can put this on the body of his receiver, I think it's a catch and fall down for a first down. 
And John, this is where you miss Brian Edwards. Third down, passing down. He's your guy. Where's 89? That's right. I would think 75% of this offense tonight, game plan wise, was going through the hands of Brian Edwards. Charlton will punt it away. Into the end zone for a touchback. It's been a defensive struggle early. Tied at six. 6.46 to go, first half. Of this season, Taco Bell celebrates student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Lip Moss Student Section of the Year. The South Carolina Gamecock Student Section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Litmas Student Section Contest. Not a lot to cheer about tonight. No touchdowns in this first half. Both teams have kicked a pair of field goals, and South Carolina's best offensive player, Brian Edwards, has not been on the field in the last few series after getting banged up. Evans turned back for a loss. Keir Thomas coming back from injury are with the play for South Carolina. Thomas does a nice job of getting vertical, creating havoc in the backfield, and creating that tackle for loss, that negative play you're looking for on first down. Open over the middle. And that's the first catch of the game for Corey Sutton, App State's best wide receiver, as we check in with Kevin. Up 21 nothing, first quarter. I think somebody poked the bear with those playoff <laughs> I rankings. I think so, too. Or the Tiger. Two tight ends, third down. And the second effort by Evans, good for a first down. And he's watching Evans run. He doesn't need a big crease to kind of get his body through the line of scrimmage. You only need a yard. Watch him turn his body and the patient system jump cut and then explode through the hole for the first down. The vision and then the jump cut, really good there. You brought it up early. App State right now is winning the line of scrimmage in this game. And they lost it in a bad weather game at home for their only loss last week against Georgia Southern. That was an option team. Evans hammerheads right into the teeth of that defense. Got a yard. I, I think Appalachian State's really content right now to play this time of, type of football game. You look up at the clock, you feel pretty good. It's in the deep into the second quarter. It's 6-6. You're on the road in a hostile environment. I think head coach Eli Drinkwitz is very comfortable right now. The closer it stays and the longer it stays close, all the pressure's on South Carolina. Exactly. Thomas has plenty of time. He'll try to take off, and he's devoured. Javon Kinlaw and Sherrod Green got to him third and long. Great coverage downfield by the Gamecocks in their secondary. Nowhere for Zach Thomas to go with the football. You mentioned it, Anish. Terrific pass protection. Right about now is the time as a quarterback you go, this ball should be gone. And he tried to find a place to to kind of get down and protect it and not make a bad play worse. But that's the first play the Carolina defense has been able to rise up. Can they do it twice in a row? Thomas has Darrington Evans. Evans is going to be awfully close. He needed nine, and it appears he's going to be Maybe just a little short. They may measure. And
and the chain gang will come out. Smart play again by Evans. He splits the two defenders. He knew he needed about another yard, yard and a half. He didn't take one on, head on. He split the tacklers, and I think that might get Appalachian State a first down by about a nose of a football. Evans tonight has 85 yards combined to rushing and to receiving. As a team, App State has 120. The offense has run through number three. What we thought would be a strength for South Carolina up front has been dominated by App State. And John, they will look at the spot one more time. On first glance, it did appear to be a, a generous spot. spot. And it's a crucial spot. It's either first down App State or fourth down. Let's take a look where the knee goes down. Right there. Boy, I, I think you're right. I think this might be an opportunity for the officials to possibly move this football back a, a half a yard, which would make it a fourth down opportunity. Something to remember. Our yellow line is not exact. So that is a close approximation of where the first down line is, but not necessarily exact. I think this football is going to be somewhere around the 42-yard line. After review, the runner was down short of the line to gain. It will be fourth down at the 42-yard line. That's a big turning point. The punt team will come on. Xavier Subac. I think you could feel the air just come out of the stadium right there because this fan base knows that if Appalachian State continues to roll and gets another score before halftime, they could really get the momentum in their favor. Nobody back deep for South Carolina, almost as if they were expecting App State to maybe go for it. But punting here tells you what Eli Drinkwitz thinks of, of his, his team and his defense That's right now. Exactly right. Nobody back for South Carolina. And this is going to take an App State roll inside the 15. And it'll die at the 10-yard line. A 47-yard punt. No return. That punt tells you App State knows it can hang. All right, thanks, Kevin. The playoff Polaroid got a good shake today with Alabama and Penn State, both in the top four going down. Rico Dowdle on first down, tripped up. Not much there for the senior from Asheville, North Carolina, by way of Gaffney, South Carolina. And credit to Marco Jackson with another tackle in and around the line of scrimmage. This Appalachian State defense is downhill and aggressive. To carry on Joyner into the game as a wide receiver in the slot. Battle again. Davis Gaither broke up the play. And he was finished off by Demetrius Taylor. Davis Gaither is an outstanding football player. 16 total tackles last week, and now he gets another tackle for loss as we get a timeout by Appalachian State. Less than two minutes to go in the half. App State with a stop here. Even with the strong leg of Joseph Charlton has a chance for pretty good field position and a chance at a score before halftime. They do. You want to you have the momentum with a score right before halftime. You want to be able to go in and talk about it with a lead. I think if you're South Carolina, you would hate to go into the locker room tied at six. It's, demor it's demoralizing for a football team. And they have not been a second-half team this no, year. No, they haven't. They've struggled mightily in the second half. Sunday NFL countdown comes your way at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow before Aaron Donald returns to Pittsburgh, how the NFL's best defender was built in the Steel City. Peyton and Eli relive the helmet catch, which, by the way, was the final catch of David Tyree's career. Way to go out. That's the Costanza walk-off <laughs> right is. there. 
And then Monday Night Football, the undefeated Niners and the Seahawks. Third and long for Carolina. Number one, can they protect, and who are they going to go to as a playmaker on third down? Still no Brian Edwards. Here's the blitz. Holinsky. Off the fingertips and intercepted. Picked off by Appalachian State. And App State on the end of the end zone. No signal yet. They're celebrating like it's a touchdown. Nicholas Ross had the pick. He's marked out of bounds at about the two-yard line, it appears. Well, partner, we just talked about momentum carrying that into halftime. It looks right now a catchable ball on the outside goes through the hands of Leggett right into the lap of Nicholas Ross. And I think they're going to give them oh, they'll say it's a, touchdown. Them a touchdown. All right, touchdown. So a point after coming, Ryan Holinsky had not thrown an interception in his previous five games. That is the 80th interception by Appalachian State in the last five years. And each Only one, two other teams have more. And it wasn't due to the freshman quarterback accuracy. That ball went right through the hands of Leggett. You have to be able to catch that football. And with Brian Edwards out, somebody else for South Carolina offensively needs to step up. If you don't have a running game, your quarterback, he can only throw it. He can't catch it. And the team right now with the momentum is Appalachian State. Their defense has really dominated in this first half. A pick six by Nicholas Ross in what's been a defensive game. Special teams, defense, those plays can change a game and it's changed this one. Tough field position number one when you don't bring a guy back to field the punt, you get it inside your 15 yard line and you don't convert on third down. It's been difficult. And Carolina since Edwards went out with the injury has not been in plus territory. Their offense has stalled. And this App State team already with a win against North Carolina in week four. 30 minutes and a change from a Carolina sweep. Fair catch is made inside the 25. It'll come out to the 25. App State has two wins against the Power Five in school history. You know the first one. One of the great games in the history of college football and the biggest upset in the history of the sport. As an FCS team, they go to the big house and knock off fifth-ranked Michigan. Then in week four, similar ending. Blocked kick against North Carolina for the win. No team from the Sun Belt has ever beaten two Power Fives in one season. Well, right now, we're close. We're 151 away from halftime as we take a look at the notable games against the Power Five teams. Overtime at Tennessee. Overtime against Penn State. One point lost to Wake. Dangerous pass, but threaded in there to the 30-yard line. A gain of five, the tight end, Markway. Two good throws back-to-back -back by Helinski. He needs to catch on fire, but he needs some help on the perimeter. Finds Jay Urich, third string quarterback, who's also playing wide receiver because of the lack of depth. That's his first catch of the season. And here comes more tempo by the Gamecocks on offense. Delayed pressure. Holinsky moves the pocket. Being chased to the sideline. Incomplete. The receiver out of bounds. You're right, Holinsky, the pick that was not on him. He's had a couple of balls go off his receiver's hands. It was an issue last week as well against Vanderbilt. Young quarterback with a lot of moving parts around him. More pressure than he needs right now to lead this offense. Four-man rush. That's off the hands of Urich. It's frustrating when you're out there and you're looking for help as a quarterback 
right now is when you got to get everybody around you look at them and say guys we got to step up because somebody has to take the place of Brian Edwards somebody has to at least be able to catch the football and fall down for first down fourth drop for Carolina now Holinsky rolling to his right and that is incomplete intended for Leggett Now, what has surprised you the most in this first half, John? I think the way Appalachian State on defense has completely shut down the running attack of South Carolina on first and second down. They've forced throws on third and long, and they've been it's been playing right into the hands of the pressure defense from defensive coordinator Ted Roof. Outstanding punt. Can South Carolina down it? They do. Inside the one yard line, a 58 yard boot by Joseph Charlton. And this is now a chance for South Carolina's defense to do something. Well, you're teeing up your defense by your special teams play. This is an excellent job of just being able to hold on to the football and get it inside the one yard line. A great punt and a good special teams play. Now you look at your defensive front. Can you create a negative play? Can you get a, some penetration up front? This is supposed to be the strength of South Carolina's defense. Mukwamu down to the punt. And now this App State offense has to deal with the noise. Two tight ends. Right up the middle. And Evans gives App State a little breathing room. And I expect App State to play this conservatively. They may not have to call another play if South Carolina doesn't call timeout. And we may have a player down in the end zone by the goal line for Appalachian State. The injured player is Colin Reed, the starting tight end. A South Carolina native from Boiling Springs. All conference a season ago. It looks like they're looking at the right leg. It just gets bent over backwards. You have a defender on top and another one below. And it looked like that right leg was just pinned underneath. Reed will gingerly walk off. 39 seconds to go. Carolina's got a couple of timeouts. App State gets the ball to start the third quarter. You stay conservative. You take this into the locker room. After that loss to Georgia Southern last Thursday, App State's got to be feeling good. The coaches told us this is a veteran team, a lot of returning starters. They opened up at Penn State on the road a year ago, took the Nittany Lions to overtime. The surroundings do not phase this team. This doesn't look like a team that's staring into the headlights and feeling... No the pressure of the bright lights. They're very confident in what they can do, and I think they have a, a very tight game plan, but yet they're playing free and easy because this is a free shot on the road against a Power 5 team to come away with a win. And so far, they're doing everything they can to put themselves in position for the second half. Now you wonder, how would App State respond? Because a week ago, this was a top 25 team. This was a team that, from the outside at least, had Cotton Bowl aspirations, New Year's Six aspirations. All that went by the wayside with the loss to Georgia Southern. And Thomas will just run it. And a timeout taken by Carolina. Detail with Nick Saban only on ESPN Plus features the Alabama head coach breaking down the way the Crimson Tide defend the RPO. That's the run pass option, and 
He looks at why Alabama's RPO is so dangerous. It's available now on ESPN+. Plus. Bama losing today to LSU. Penn State lost earlier to Minnesota. I would anticipate LSU jumps Ohio State yes. as the number one team when the new rankings come out Tuesday. The Buckeyes should stay at two. If Clemson wins, number three. they're number three. I think Bama goes to four. You think Bama stays at four? I do. Yeah, I agree with you. At halftime, though, that looked like it could be a blowout. <laughs> they were and outside of the four. In a blowout, <laughs> Bama would not have been in the top four, and they would have had a dangerous road to maybe get back into the top four. I think you're right. As Appalachian State takes another time out here with 33 seconds, before halftime and we, we were talking about momentum just a couple minutes ago I think Appalachian State I think this is an opportunity for head coach Eli Drinkwitz to call a timeout talk to his team not only about what they want to do with the remaining seconds that are left in the second quarter but kind of get them going into the locker room with an attitude a mindset of where they want to go once they get the football in the third quarter it's an App State team that was the preseason favorite in the Sun Belt. They started 7-0. Reached number 20 in the AP poll, the highest ranking by any Sun Belt team in history. But lost last time out to Georgia Southern. Thomas will go to the air. He's going to take a shot downfield. Incomplete dangerous throw. J.C. Horn with good coverage on Hennigan. Horn had great coverage on Hennigan, and I think Hennigan did a good job of trying to bat the football away. He didn't have inside leverage. Right now he becomes a defender and tries to knock that football out of the air away from Horn. All right, so if you're South Carolina now, App State punting from its own end zone. This time they do have Number a return one, man back there. You get a return of a fair catch this thing. You might have excellent field position and have an opportunity to get points with 28 seconds remaining before halftime. Subach. And a fair catch made by Legatti. Muffs it. App State recovers. There is a flag down, but it's back at the 22. Another one back at the 12. Partner, I don't know how these penalties are going to turn out, but it could not have gone any worse in this first half for South Carolina in terms of injuries with Brian Edwards and just execution, simple execution on both sides of the football. Dropped passes, a pick six thrown by South Carolina and potentially, are oh, they going to change the call? It's going to be Carolina ball now. So the call was changed. The ruling on the field is that South Carolina recovered the punt. It will be first down. After the play was over, we have offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Appalachian State, number 19. Unsportsmanlike conduct against South Carolina, number 9. Those penalties will offset first down South Carolina. Penalties on Price and Cam Smith, and Leggett, the freshman, was able to get that ball back from Huff somehow, and that's a big break for South Carolina. On a night that's kind of crisp and cool, we've had some difficulty. We've seen some difficulty in securing the balls, not only in special teams and opportunities to catch punts, but coming off the fingertips of South Carolina wide receivers. Gamecocks have timeouts, 14 seconds to go, and they have it at the 44-yard line. Their kicker, Parker White, has hit from as long as 49. That was against Georgia. He also hit from 49 against Florida. So far, the lowest scoring first half of the season for South Carolina, and you said it, a cool, crisp day here in late autumn. Temp 
temperatures right now about 40 degrees expected to drop below 40 as the night wears on. Empty look. Three man rush. Polinski with time on the move to the sideline. Leggett brings it in. He's in App State territory. That was a good catch, a difficult catch, and he made himself available by coming back to the quarterback, Polinski. He got out of bounds. Clock stops with six seconds. Polinski to Markway. And Markway taken down. There's a second left. And South Carolina got the timeout. Second timeout. So you've got the ball at the 43-yard line. Olinsky will throw it into the end zone. I think you have to. Down to Chris. Well, much champ told me before the game that he was comfortable with Parker White in a must-win situation from the 35-yard line. Yeah, so about eight yards away from the 35. Now, the, the couple of telling plays in this first half. App State, they had the ball, what, around their 45-yard line, fourth down and short after a call was reversed that changed the spot. And we wondered, okay, road team, group of five, as good as App State is, maybe you go for it, you play with house money right against South Carolina, they punt. That was the first tell that App State felt we, we can, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with yeah. these guys. We, can, we don't have to gamble everywhere. We can pick and choose our spots. And right now they've done a really good job of playing field position as South Carolina is going to bring their offense back for the last play of the first half, trying to get this football into the end zone with somebody to have an opportunity to make a play. App State dropping four players back inside of the five-yard line. Here's the Hail Mary. Olinsky downfield. Ruled incomplete. <laughs> Carolina made it interesting on the last play of the first half, but App State bringing that slingshot to Columbia. And so far, they're on target. They've got a 13-6 lead. The Mountaineers from Boone, North Carolina, looking to knock off a second Power 5 opponent this season. They're halfway there. Halftime after the break. You're watching Veterans Week coverage on ESPN, brought to you by USAA. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Nationwide, a part of Veterans Week on ESPN brought to you by USAA. Appalachian State, the noted giant killers of college football at it again. Of course, Michigan, the big win in 2007. They beat North Carolina in week four and now will receive to begin the second half with a seven point lead on the road against South Carolina. And Anisha really hasn't been shocking so far only because they felt like they dominated up front. They've done what they wanted to do on both sides of the football. This is Virgil on the track team. Anish Roth alongside John Kinjemi. Appalachian State has dominated the line of scrimmage. They got a pick six. That's the difference in this game. And they've learned they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with South Carolina. They can. What was the advantage of South Carolina coming into the game, we thought the defensive front seven has been a disadvantage. And I think South Carolina offensively, they have to find an answer with Edwards out of the game. They have to find a way to run the football and stay on the field offensively. Darrington Evans has been the first half star for App State. Zach Thomas over the middle. He's got Henry Pearson, his sixth catch of the season. Chris Budden caught up with Will Muschamp a little while ago. 
What is Brian Edwards' status for the second half? Well, he's good to go. He's coming back. Where do you turn to if he's unable to go 100% with all the injuries that you have? What do you need to make out of your offense in the second half? Well, we got to find some ways to run the football, and that's what's hurting us. They're, they're loading the box, forcing us to throw. We've had way too many drops. Ryan's been accurate with the football. Find some ways to run the ball. Thank you, Coach. A first down run for Evans, looking for his third 100-yard game of the season, north of 60 now. And uh, the good news in that interview for South Carolina fans, Brian Edwards is back because without him, the offense went into a black hole in the first half. Well, it's been in neutral, and some would say maybe in reverse because you have no running game to make up for the lack of production Edwards can bring to you on the perimeter. And you had a quarterback in Helensky that's done a pretty good job in trying to locate the football. He just has no help with, at the skill position right now. Evans tried to spin away, but that South Carolina defensive front is excellent. And they were able to stand him up after a short game. I think Evans has been a little bit of a difference maker for App State offensively. He's been able to be elusive. When there's an available two or three, four yard run, he's able to turn his pads and get those necessary yards. He's been the best offensive player in the game tonight. And that time devoured by South Carolina. A loss of a yard as Sherrod Green got in there. It's third down. If you're a South Carolina fan, you need some more of that. You need some more stops, some negative plays, possibly a turnover that cuts the field in half for your offense. You need to get this crowd back into the football game, and you need to be, quite frankly, competitive right now in the third quarter. Five wide. Thomas's pass intercepted. That was the play that South Carolina needed. Ernest Jones' second interception of the year. Anish, we were just talking about trying to cut the field in half. This defense came out with a purpose, and that purpose was to win the game defensively and make it a little bit easier for your offense. Ernest Jones comes up with his second interception of the season, and this is just a throw. I'm not so sure Zach Thomas saw the linebacker in the throwing lane. Sometimes that happens to a quarterback, but it benefits the South Carolina defense, number one, but their offense is going to tee it up in excellent field position. Only the fifth turnover of the season for App State. Brian Edwards back in there. Rico Dowdle gets the call, and he's tripped up by Trey Cobb. You heard Will Muschamp tell Chris they've got to run the football too. But again, Rico Dowdle's coming back after missing two games with a sprained right knee. Tavian Feaster, their leading rusher, is out with a groin injury. It's tough right now getting yards on the ground for South Carolina. Olinsky off play action. Downfield for Edwards, incomplete. He was double covered, and it's third down. It's a tough ask when you're crowding the line of scrimmage as Appalachian State is doing defensively, and then you send just two receivers out. You're out man in the secondary. You've got two on one bracket coverage running stride for stride with Brian Edwards. John, I know it's still early in this game. Is this four-down territory yes, for South Carolina? It, yes, it could be. If you don't feel like you can get points with your special teams and, and make a confident kick, I would be, as a play caller, dialing up two plays right now. Olinsky will throw. Completes to Edwards. He's tackled at the 32-yard line. Only a yard on the play. And it's fourth down. Pressure in the pocket made an inaccurate throw down the field to a playmaker, and it's going to bring out the special teams on fourth down. Parker White has connected on a couple of field goals today. And Appalachian State's been able to do this consistently to South Carolina. Forced great opportunities into field goal chances, and it's only resulted in six points so far. That's a great sudden change defensive stand so far for App State. A 50-yarder. This would be a new career long. 
And Parker White with his third field goal of the game gives South Carolina three. The Gamecocks still without a touchdown, but they turn the turnover into points. 13-9, App State still on top here in Columbia. From williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, this is the SEC on ESPN. 13-9, Appalachian State looking to knock off its second Power 5 opponent this season. They beat North Carolina in Week 4. UNC beat South Carolina in Week 1 for fans of the transitive property of sports. Will Tommy to kick it off. Virgil has the 20, cuts it back, stiff arm, Virgil across the 30, down the sideline, and taken down inside the 40, the ball popped out, but he was already out at the 41-yard line of South Carolina, Caleb Kinlaw, Caleb Virgil in the open field just makes a mockery of the speed and movement by South Carolina. Everybody's outside the numbers for South Carolina on special teams, and Virgil's able to cut it back against the grain and now instant field position for the Mountaineers offense. And whatever momentum South Carolina had just gained, the pendulum just swung back the other way and with violence. Thomas under pressure, got to get rid of it, and he does. Flag down, we may get a late hit. They've had many long <laughs> yes. conferences today. And... We've had offsetting penalties a number of times today. There is no foul for a face mask against the defense. However, illegal man downfield on the offense number 51. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We play first down. Bear Hunter, whose dad is Wake Forest's running back's coach. And I don't want to put that one on the big fella. Number one, because he's 6'2", 285. And number two, I think the ball was supposed to come out on a swing pass by Zach Thomas, the quarterback, throwing it out on the perimeter. So the linemen have to release at some point. So that's just one of those that goes on the quarterback. You have to be able to get that football out on time. Raekwon Anderson, the speedy freshman in the backfield. Anderson dropped right at the line of scrimmage by Rick Sandage. Another penalty marker down. A lot of linemen in white jerseys are clapping. It looks like they're kind of eavesdropping on the officials. This may go against South Carolina. Holding on the defense number 90. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. It will be first down. And that's an automatic first down, and that is a killer for South Carolina. Sandage called for the hold. Well, especially when you're able to get there's the hold with the right hand inside the shoulder pads of Hannon, the center. But especially when you're able to make a couple plays behind the line of scrimmage, and you've already given up instant field position via your special teams, you have to do what App State's defense just did on that last sudden change. You have to take this field position 
and use it to your advantage and somehow either get the football back or force another opportunity with a field goal. Out of the two tight end set. Williams bulldozing ahead. And a gain of four on the play, second and one. John, this South Carolina team has been tough to figure out. They go on the road and beat Georgia, currently ranked fifth in the playoff rankings. Gave Florida all they could handle in a game where Should've they really got robbed by some terrible yes. officiating. Should have beat Florida here. But then you lose by 20 to Tennessee, and now you're down, again, to a very good App State team, but they're not in your weight class. Group of five, power five. Agreed. This is Williams, and he's got the first down. This is an App State team that was ranked just a week ago. Number 20, the highest ranking ever by a Sun Belt team. And if not for the loss to Georgia Southern, they might be playing in this game thinking about a chance at a New Year's Six Bowl, a Cotton Bowl berth. The good news for App State today, Georgia Southern lost That's to Troy, right. which means App State is back in the driver's seat in the East Division of the Sun Belt. And regardless of what happens tonight, if they win their conference games the rest of the way, they'll play in the league championship. Zach Thomas will throw. One of his receivers fell down. Sherrod Green making the tackle after maybe a yard at second down. He was looking downfield. It looked like Hennigan Corey fell Sutton. down. He was trying to get it to Sutton or Hennigan downfield. You're right. And I think there was a, some confusion and a collision around the five-yard line. And that made Zach kind of hold the football, tuck it down, and try to get as much as he could on the ground. And there's a lot at stake right now for South Carolina. They have to try to find a way to get out of this funk right now on second and long. Tunnel screen. Sutton slips away down the sideline. Sutton is out of bounds inside the five-yard line. First and goal, Appalachian State. What an individual effort by Corey Sutton. Just a simple inside screen. He's able to break the arm tackle on the perimeter and then almost get into the end zone. He gets inside the 10-yard line. Good balance by Sutton, but strength to break the initial tackle to get inside the five-yard line. Two tight ends stacked to the right. Pop pass. Sutton gets a block, has an angle, reaching across. And he is going to be marked just shy. J.C. Horn saved the touchdown at second and goal. Boy, I don't know. That was so close. And he should look like the ball may have broke the plane. They can't look at this. Before his knee goes down. Let's see. Not at, I think that might be a good call. That, that's bang, bang. It looked like the knee came down as the ball was inside the one. App State has done a pretty good job tonight attacking the perimeter. They will look. They will look at that last play. What an effort by Corey Sutton on the screen initially to get the football inside the five and then on that last touch pass, it looks like the left knee Right knee down, I think it's just, just short of, of breaking the plane. SEC rules analyst Matt Austin is yep. with us tonight. Matt, does that ball cross the goal line before that knee goes down? It certainly looks to me like on the view that's right down the goal line, that when his knee hits the ground, it looks like he's extending the ball over the goal line. So from the view I saw, this looks like it should be a touchdown. This view should tell us right there. Now, in your eyes, is that conclusive? Is that indisputable? On the field is confirmed. Second down, Appalachian State. Well, we got our answer. <laughs> they agree with Matt. It's a well, the ruling was confirmed, so he was shy of the goal line. Excuse me. Darrington Evans in the backfield. It's still second and goal. 
Well, it's such a tough call for an official in real time. And that's why you want to take your time, take a look at it. But still, App State now inside the one. And they've won the battle at the line of scrimmage. Thomas, quarterback, keeper. No doubt about it. Touchdown. John, you talk about momentum shifts. South Carolina's defense comes up with an interception to begin this half. The offense unable to really do much. They settle for a long field goal. Big kick return. The catalyst for this App State drive. They punch it in, and all of a sudden, that momentum that South Carolina had seized has evaporated, and it swung more so in the opposite direction. Appalachian State has been able to turn good field position into offensive possessions and score touchdowns. South Carolina has been able to kick field goals. You're not going to win kicking field goals. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. And Advil. What pain? Beautiful scene at halftime. About 600 military personnel took the field for the annual military appreciation show. And this year marks the 75th anniversary of D-Day. In honor of that anniversary, three World War II veterans were honored. Bernie Shankman, Louis Crouch, and Luther Godwin. Jamie Robinson takes it out to the 24-yard line. South Carolina now facing its largest deficit of the game at 11. It's 20 to 9. And offensively, how do they move the ball? Brian Edwards came back on that last drive. He didn't look 100%. Well, Coach Mushkamp talked to Chris out of halftime, and he said he has to find a way, they have to find a way to run the football. That means winning the battle up front and finding a playmaker that can make the first defender miss against the defense that's crowding the line of scrimmage. There's Dowdle into that Mountaineer phalanx, able to pick up a couple. Rico Dowdle had a couple of 100-yard games this year against Bama and Kentucky, but again, the sprained knee has kept him out of action the last few weeks, and injuries have been an issue for him throughout his career. Alinsky's pass, a low throw, and it's brought in by Markway. I, I talked with Rico Daddle during the week, and he told me that he felt 100% that he felt like he had the adrenaline back, and the, he had last week could only run, but this week was full go. He said this is so frustrating, his career dealing with all the injuries, and now another one, but said he was ready for this one. And it's so tough coming back from all these injuries throughout his career. Yes, he's practiced all week, but it's so much different in a game running against a team that's putting seven and eight guys in and around the line of scrimmage. Twelve carries, only seven yards for Dowdle. Here's the blitz. Olinsky has Edwards, who spun down by Nicholas Ross after a gain of 14. Anish, I look at it in the opposite way. I think you have to get the ball to Brian Edwards to loosen up that App State defense and make him get off the line of scrimmage to cover a threat down the field. Going to the far sideline, and that is Trey Adkins, second catch of the day for the walk-on. This is Dowdle. He has not found much traction. What's it? It's like this South Carolina running game is running into a brick wall. There's no room. There are very little creases or gaps to fit through for Rico Dowdle right now. And the only alternative is you have to be able to pass protect and allow your freshman quarterback to either find Leggett or Edwards and, and possibly Atkins who's now an option at wide receiver. But this defense has been stellar. Markway and Edwards in the slot. Olinsky setting up the screen. Dowdle juggled it, 
And that cost him. Fourth down. This defense looks like they just wanted a little bit more right now. This App State defense on the screen. Watch, there's four white jerseys outside before Dowdle can get a handle on the football and turn his shoulders so he can make a move on a defender. There's no running room either in the on the ground or through the air right now and run after catch opportunities. Charlton and a whistle. False start on the offense number nine. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. And just at the second penalty on South Carolina. Will Muschamp told us that this App State defense, they're SEC caliber. And he said they're not just middle of the pack they're SEC. Upper, upper echelon. They're proving it tonight with their team speed. They don't really miss any open field tackles, and they always have play, play with great leverage. And again with the fair catch. South Carolina has just one explosive play on offense. They're staring at an 11-point deficit late in the third. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Taylor Lamb is an offensive graduate assistant for South Carolina. He was the quarterback at Appalachian State before Zach Thomas. Those two still incredibly close. And Thomas said Lamb was his mentor. They talk often. Thomas looks up to Lamb. Now on off visit sidelines for this game. Well, it's always a great resource to go back and see a guy that's done it so well at a high level like Lamb. And I bet they didn't talk much this week. But I'm sure in prior weeks, they've talked a lot and a lot of advice going one way. Yeah, Lamb was a four-year starter at App State. 49 straight starts at one point. As Evans has dropped, Chris has more. Yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of communication between the two this week. I talked to Zach Thomas, and he said, I'll probably send him a text, but we're both competitors. He said, I learned a lot from him. The biggest thing was what he taught me is control what you can control. There's so much in a football game that's out of your hands. Control what is in your hands. On top of that, be positive with your teammates because they look up to you. Zach Thomas, in a word, a winner. 17 and 3, his record is a starter. One of those losses to Georgia Southern last year, where he was knocked out of the game in the first few plays. Incomplete downfield for Sutton. And he was covered by Jamie Robinson. Excellent coverage by Robinson. Really, Zach Thomas had nowhere to go with the football because of that man-to-man -man coverage right in front of the App State bench. So now you've got third and long, and South Carolina must take advantage of this opportunity. This game is starting to get closer to the fourth quarter. They've already had an interception in this second half. Can they get off the field here on a third and long opportunity? South Carolina's defense has not been the issue tonight. Evans tumbles to the 15-yard line, fourth down. And now the Gamecocks, with special teams, have a chance at good field position. They do. First of all, you have to field the football cleanly. They've already had a muff by Leggett, who's going back to return this one. You also need to have a guy back, which they didn't do earlier, and yes. that led to the pick six. It did. It the ball inside the 10-yard line. They had terrible field position. Xavier Leggett, the freshman, waiting back at his own 46. Subach to punt. Leggett lets this one bounce. It takes a Mountaineer bounce inside the 30-yard line. You have to field that punt. That's 20 yards of field position you just lost. A freshman mistake. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Nationwide. Renee Schroff, John Kajemi, Chris Budden with you on a Saturday night. Temperatures dipping into the low 40s. We may be even in the 30s by now. And South Carolina looking to get something going without a touchdown today. Deshaun Fenwick, the running game has been stuck in quicksand. Kevin Connors has been rolling. He's not in quicksand. Casey? A 
Massey on top of Kentucky. South Carolina beat Kentucky this year. Chad Terrell, the redshirt sophomore, first reception of the season, fourth of his career. And South Carolina really digging deep right now in that receiving court. I think you have to do a little bit more of that. Easy passes to the short side of the field because helinski has been on target throwing the football. Right up the middle to Sean Fenwick. Right Fenwick. now, I... I'm sorry, right now I think that's almost a wasted play on offense. I think you'd be better off throwing the football on first down. And whoever's left at Williams Bryce agrees with you. Crowd has thinned out a little bit. A lot more fans were in their seats at the start of this one. Screen pass to Edwards. And he tumbles to midfield. That's a first down, a gain of 10. Good effort. By Brian William, by Brian Edwards getting yards after first contact and moving the chains there on second down. This running game has been non-existent, so you have to get to your easy passing game on first and second down. Because I think Brian Holinsky has been able to throw the football fairly effectively. He's been on target. It hasn't been due to the lack of, of his play that they're behind right now, 20 to 9. Edwards on the sideline, north of 3,000 yards receiving for his career. And again, a wasted run play, and you're going to get this reaction from the crowd right now. The running game just hasn't been there all night. No. I, I'm almost feeling like you have to move the pocket on first down, cut the field in half with your receivers because you don't have the quick twitch guys kind of throw them open to the short side of the field. South Carolina only averaging 2.9 yards on first down. And a team that has struggled in the second half, and especially in the fourth quarter, is down 11 to App State. Can the boys from Boone do it again? They're 15 minutes away from another Power 5 win. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Sandstorm has turned into another kind of storm for South Carolina tonight. Down 11, entering the fourth quarter to Appalachian State. To carry on Joyner into the game at quarterback. Holinsky split wide and now a penalty marker with the play clock at 13. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Five yard penalty remains second down. This is what happens when you have a lot of skill injuries, but it shouldn't happen coming after the third quarter going into a fourth quarter in a TV timeout. If you're going to go out and have a formation with Joyner at quarterback, you better be able to get your skill guys in and out of the huddle with that much time. Joyner looking to the sideline, play clock at 10. Holinsky back in there at quarterback. Screen pass to Joyner. John, I thought early on South Carolina had success with Joyner on the field. They were moving him around. He lined up at quarterback, moved to wide receiver, but it got this defense off balance. Then the Gamecocks got away from it. When you're deficient of athletes, uh, of of quick twitch guys, you have to get your best ones available on the field, and Joyner either playing quarterback or slot or wideout is going to be one of those players. On third down, five-man pressure, incomplete, and a flag at the end of the play. Gene Charles was on the coverage, the pass intended for Edwards. Pass interference on the defense number eight. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Gene Charles gets called for the interference going through the back of Edwards. He's going to be at the bottom of the screen. Just a slant route. Let's see if he makes contact with the left arm. Yeah, that's definitely interference before the ball gets there. 
A first down for South Carolina. Dowdle in the backfield, two tight ends. Play action. Olinsky. Sacked! Jordan Fair gets into the backfield. It's a loss of 10 on the play. Just when you think South Carolina is going to get a little bit of momentum offensively, you go play action on first down. This ball has to come out one way or another. You have to make a decision to throw this one away or get rid of it. Luckily for Helinski, he's able to hold on to the football and not turn it over, but a big loss on first down. I get South Carolina's beat up on offense, and they've had issues, especially at wide receiver. App State has physically dominated this Gamecocks offense through three-plus quarters. Ball start on the offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty remains second down. It's the left tackle, Sidarius Hutcherson. Nine different starters on the O-line this season. They got Dylan Wanham today back from injury to start at right tackle. That's been a revolving door the last few weeks. Dowdle back from injury, but it's look, been at, a the, mass look unit. at the receiving core. Brian Edwards got hurt in the first half. Had to miss most of the first half. Shai Smith is out. We have not seen Ortre Smith. Josh Van is out. Nick Muse is out. On second and long. Olinsky. That's broken up. Shamar Jean Charles. That time made a clean play and it's third down. You can tell has which side of the football has a little pep in their step, and that's App State, especially on defense. They are just look like they have that extra gear to get to, and now on third and long, you have to take a chance. If you're South Carolina, you got to get the football into one of these receivers with a little running room ahead of them, maybe a quick screen with this coverage you're seeing. App State drops eight. Holinsky completes well shy of the marker. Will get the reception. It's fourth down. And let's see what Will Muschamp does. The ball is just shy of the 35-yard line. Holinsky looking toward the sideline. It looks like that offense is going to stay out on the football field. I think Coach Muschamp has made his decision. Parker White has hit from 50 today. This would be beyond 50, but the offense will stay on. Holinsky engulfed Akeem Davis Gaither. It starts with coverage. There's nowhere to go with the football for Holinsky. He's been battling for three quarters, but this App State defense has been too tough to overcome. State up 20 to 9. I've been standing on this App State sidelines in front kickoff. Not once has this group looked phased by the moment. The stage has not been too big. And that's what Eliza Drinkwitz told me at halftime, that he was not worried that the moment would get too big. I've been hearing these players say, let's show these SEC guys who we really are. Oh, they've done that and then some as Darrington Evans picks up three. We check in with Kevin. Kevin Georgia lost to South Carolina. If this result holds and South Carolina drops to four and six, does that impact Georgia when the next playoff rankings come out? Remember, they're sitting at number five right now. Well, if you take into consideration maybe the team that was playing on that particular day. Oh, this, number six, excuse me. Yeah, this team does not resemble the team that went on the road to win at Georgia. Not even close with the injuries they have. College football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. Georgia sitting at number six. 
Clemson at five. They'll move up if that score against NC State holds. Penn State and Bama both losing. And uh, the big debate this week is going to be who's number four. Is it Bama? Is it Oregon? I tend to believe, and I know the schedule doesn't hold up for Bama. Had they been blown out by LSU and it's what we saw in the else. first half, yeah. I think Bama is out and maybe without a real path to get back in. But because they made that game close and lost close to the team that was ranked number two and will likely be number one this Tuesday, I can still see, and I think Bama should still be at number four. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's going to be LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama. And I do think a team like Oregon and or Georgia will be somewhere in that 5, 6, 7 range for sure. Now, I'll say this. I do think Bama's in danger of being passed at number four if they don't win the SEC. Marcus Williams to the outside. Stiff arm. Green has him. And he's ambushed, but there is a flag that comes in at the end of the play. I think that was the first U-turn run I've seen out of App State all evening. Hold on the offense, number 60. That penalty is declined, third down. Noah Hannon, the center, a South Carolina native from Greer. If South Carolina does not come back and win this game, they'll be four and six, and to become bowl eligible, they'll have to win their last two at Texas A&M and then Clemson. Third and long, near midfield for App State. They have not been great on third downs the last two games. And content to run it with Marcus Williams. The way the defense is playing for App State, I think that's a really good call. Don't put your quarterback or your offense in a position where you're going to force the football down the field. You might have another turnover, although this team has been very good protecting the football. Only one turnover tonight and five in the year in terms of giving it up in the passing game. So I, I like that call on third and long. And what has South Carolina shown you offensively that gives you faith they can drive the length of the field against this defense? Through three and a half quarters, not a whole lot. They don't have a running game to rely on, and they don't have the skill guys to create separation in the passing game right now. Subach's punt, fair catch signaled for and made at the 11. A long way to go for South Carolina. 9.06 to go in regulation. ESPN College Football is presented by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. This is November and you gotta keep your hands warm. We're in Columbia in the middle of a sandstorm. Time to fall back and spin the clocks. The apparel says, I love game cocks. Mr. Rogers, he struck the pose while Lattimore provided the poet's prose. Big Bad John will smash you to smithereens while Jadavion still spitting out Wolverines. Sterling Sharp was the ultimate player, and Connor Shaw was the Clemson slayer. Alshon Jeffrey still running free from Dr. Lou to the HBC. But this is now the House of Coach Boom, so are you ready for the Legion of Doom? When I started this song, I had no fear. Now I'm staring at the end of my career. You know, we have apology cards that we read when we make egregious errors, so I should probably read an apology card. What, no. was, I, what was I thinking? I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, Darius Rucker has his name on that studio. He's going to be like, hey, don't let that guy He's already in texted anything me. with my name ever again. He said, get carrots and hummus out of my <laughs> studio. <laughs> you know what was funny? So I wanted to do this. We thought it would be fun. You guys offer no encouragement, no, <laughs> no support. We did haters, not. haters all the way, and then everybody wanted producer credit. Well, you know, we saw the finished product. We wanted to get in on a little of that. A 
I'll still put you on the Grammys list. Don't worry. My wife texted me yesterday. She said, you didn't really, you didn't really do that, did you? Oh, yeah. And she said, I should have told you at home a few times that you know, that stuff that you like to write, th th that's fine, but just don't ever sing it. <laughs> South Carolina will punt here on fourth down, 8-11 to go. I thought my music career would begin in Columbia, South Carolina. Apparently it ended here, too. Well, there's a start and finish point, right? I had a positive start. Shooting star, right? Yes. Good kick. Really good kick by Charlton, one of the best punters in the country. And Hannigan tackled shy of the 30. That's what somebody without rhythm looks like. Find out if I'm still on the air when we come back. But this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Still here, Anish Raf, John Kinjemi, and Chris Budd in Appalachian State on the verge of another Power 5 win. They knocked off North Carolina in Week 4. Of course, we all remember the Michigan win in 2007. Trying to score one for the Sun Belt. They've got the ball, seven and a half to go in regulation. And an 11 point lead for the Mountaineers who really from start to finish have dominated this game, both sides of the ball. Both defenses have played well. South Carolina just has not been able to do anything offensively against App State's D. And now head coach Eli Drinkwitz is trying to slow down the tempo and pace of their offense. They want to be able to milk this thing and snap the football with under five seconds to go on this play clock. So you have to, even though you have a, a junior quarterback that's been in this position before, you got to be able to manage that clock. Darrington Evans pushes ahead close to the 35. It's third down. This was a, a very important game for South Carolina in terms of becoming bowl eligible. And on the other side, for App State, it meant a lot because it was a big game against a Power 5 team. But what means the most to them is getting back in the race in the Sun Belt, which was achieved today without them having to win a game. Here's Virgil, he's got track speed. Israel Mukwamu led the charge, the good looking six foot four sophomore corner, it's fourth down. Good leverage and good team speed defensively for South Carolina. They're gonna get the football back to their offense who has to find some sort of explosive play to get back in this football game. And South Carolina's putting Brian Edwards on the punt return. We saw Leggett, and he's had some miscues in the punt return game today. Yeah, I think this is more about ball security and catching the football on a fair catch than even an explosive play. Multiple flags. Ball start on the offense, number 51, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Bear Hunter. I think it's important. Now in special teams for South Carolina, Brian Edwards back to receive this punt. You have to be able to come up and make a fair catch. You can't give up those 10 or 15 yards on a bad bounce. Make sure you come up and field the punt. A 
And App State will continue to run clock. Fair catch is called for and made at the 22 after a 49-yard punt by Subach. 5.01 to go. Gamecocks down two scores. Wow. Tennessee still has a shot at bowl eligibility. South Carolina's chance is slipping away. They've got to go 2-1 and one in their last three games. That includes tonight. Down by 11, Joyner. Another flag down. Ball start on the offense, number seven, five yard penalty, still first down. Penalty is on to carry on Joyner. Less than five minutes to go, John. We. we We thought this game would be decided in the trenches in terms of the strength and the bulk of South Carolina, but it's been the team speed and the tenacity of Appalachian State that looks like to be winning over. Rico Dowdle gets a couple of yards ahead of the original line of scrimmage at second down. South Carolina tonight could not run the ball. They would have had more success drawing blood from a stone. Markway, the tight end for a first down. Brian Edwards, the top receiver for South Carolina. Got banged up in the first half, had to leave the game. He's come back in, just has not been the dynamic player we're used to seeing. Olinsky chased, gets rid of it, throws it away. And that's really been the story of the game. It felt like South Carolina was going to run their offense through Brian Edwards for four quarters. They were going to wear him out. Well, he's been non-existent due to injury, and the lack of running the football and winning the battle with the line of scrimmage has forced a lot of pressure on your freshman quarterback, Ryan Walensky. Broken up, intended for Leggett, but they may get Shamar Jean Charles with another P.I. call. And initially, it looked like Gene Charles timed that one up pretty good. Pass interference on the defense number eight. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Take one more look. Quick slant, breaking on the football. I, I don't think it's, I think it's the left hand around the receiver, Leggett, that is drawing the penalty flags. It's not the timing, it's, it's the body contact. Again on the slant, close to midfield, a gain of eight. A true freshman who really was not a factor until last week when he had to start with all the injuries. They believe he is the next great one, just not there yet. And this time, Gene Charles able to break that up. Well, you're right. He's still learning on the job as another breakup by Gene Charles, who's had a little bit of a frustrating second half, but is still battling on the corner. Appalachian State, but you're right about Leggett. He's not there yet. He's not ready to take over the weight of the passing game from Brian Edwards. Olinsky finding Leggett brought down by Fair. It looks to be enough for a first down. John, you played quarterback. What's Ryan Holinsky feeling right now when your offensive line has been in flux most of the season. Your running backs have been banged up. Your receiving depth has basically been decimated. Frustration. You're fighting and battling through frustration as he checks it down here to Daddle, who's going to be able to move the change. You look outside, and you don't recognize a whole lot of people because the guys you've been throwing to for the bulk of the season are on the sideline. South Carolina has only been in the red zone once today. They do not have a touchdown. And they're going to have to continue to operate in a quick fashion with only 337 counting left to go in this football game. 
Incomplete. Davis Gaither batted it down. The Seattle Sounders off their big upset of LAFC in the Western Conference Final will host Toronto FC in the 24th MLS Cup from Century Link Field. Third time in four years that these two have met in the MLS Cup. I think at some point you have to be able to throw one up down the field, take a chance at either pass interference or get a, a big play down. Batted down again. Who else? Davis Gaither. He is a surefire Sunday player. That is the fifth pass that has, has been batted down the line of scrimmage, two by Davis Gaither in the last two plays. And you're right, he does everything well. He's an outstanding player because he can tackle in space. He's a guy that has a high motor and the best quality. He's one of those guys everybody looks to. He's the leader, one of those leaders on defense. Empty. On the slant, broken up, intended for Joyner. And it's fourth down. Ball game right here for South Carolina. If you're a wideout, you have to be able to know where you're at. You have to be able to go down to the change. You've got 10 yards. You have to go 12, you have to go 13 and give your quarterback a chance to throw you open. And now the App State contingent at williams Bryce starting to make noise. As South Carolina is gonna take a, a timeout and talk about the most important play here in the fourth quarter. I mean, do you kick a field goal here? I know it's a long one, but a it's field an option. goal brings you within eight. It's a one-score game. It's an option. It'd be, you're looking at about a 53-yard field goal, and you have to ask Coach Muschamp. Uh, he has to answer a question. Does he feel comfortable sending his kicking unit out? Right now, looking at the offense for three and a half quarters, that might be your best option. They were in this same spot earlier in this half and decided to go for it, didn't get it. And now they're going to bring Parker White out there to attempt a field goal and make this I think a you one have, score game. You have just a good a chance, probably better, in converting this long field goal because you need two scores anyway. White today has hit from 41, 25, and 50. I think South Carolina short alignment. Charlton to hold from 51. And now a flag, and if this is on South Carolina. Ball start on the offense, number 50, five-yard penalty. It's still fourth down. Hutcherson, the left tackle, so now the degree of difficulty is up even more. For and White. Now you may bring your offense back out. I'm not sure if he can kick it from 55 or 6. It's an offense that hasn't scored a touchdown, that struggled to get any sort of explosive plays throughout the night. And they will bring Holinsky back on. There's little choice in Rotten Apples, John. This has gone from bad to worse for South Carolina on offense tonight. Brian Edwards at the top of your screen. Holinsky looking that way. And he's got Edwards, who's got a first down with 3.17 to go in regulation. And... Hope still floats for South Carolina. What a throw and a great catch by Edwards. He knew the distance he needed. He went past the chains, gave himself some room to come back for the football. A nice little toe tap, and they still have life for the Gamecocks. Back to Edwards. Breaks a tackle. Edwards turns up field and scores! And with that touchdown reception of 23 yards, Brian Edwards has become the all-time leader in receiving yards at South Carolina. What a difference it makes when you get the ball in the, hand, in the hands of a playmaker that can break a tackle. Desmond Franklin didn't wrap up around the 10-yard line. 
And that's all Brian Edwards needed to spin out of that big hit and find the end zone. First touchdown of the game for South Carolina, and they will go for two. 2.58 to go. The Gamecocks have two timeouts. So if they get a defensive stop now, they will get the ball back and should have enough time. Olinsky looking, end zone, intercepted. Ball comes out. It doesn't matter. It's covered up outside of the end zone. The conversion fails. And it's 20 to 15 App State, so South Carolina will still need a touchdown. We'll try just to make a play here. Gets pressure, no one really open. And the guy that missed the tackle a play earlier makes a big play on the football, just catching it and then getting it stripped from behind. But no two-point conversion, so you still need a touchdown if you're South Carolina now. You need to get the football back, number one. You have two timeouts. There's still 2.58 to go. Besides that last drive where you needed a fourth and long conversion, the Gamecocks have had trouble moving the ball on offense. Do you go for an onside kick here? I probably would kick it deep and try to play field position, to be honest with you, because the way Appalachian State has been able to move the football, you don't want to give them instant field position. I think you put it on your defense and play field position. You can make one stop flip the field and have a chance to go 50 or 60 yards for the win. Late drama in Columbia, Appalachian State looking for its second Power 5 win of the season. They beat North Carolina. If they hold on, it would be their third all-time. There was the big win at Michigan back in 2007 that reverberated and still does throughout college. Will Tommy. And he'll send it deep. <laughs> App State is going to have it inside the five yard line. Fair catch was signaled, the ball was picked up and then downed. The player that signaled the fair catch didn't catch the ball. Sports Center tonight after Wyoming, Boise State. LSU Alabama post game coverage with reactions, plus how Penn State's loss to Minnesota shakes up the playoff Polaroid and how good can the James Harden Russell Westbrook combo be. Big debate on Tuesday with Bama losing to LSU, even though Alabama made that second half run. The comeback fell short, but Bama, I still think, has a case for the top four. You agree? I agree. I definitely do. The way the game played out, I think Alabama's going to be in at number four as we look forward to see where everybody's going to shake out now as we look forward in this football game. Half State made a mistake it on did. that kickoff. Back to field the, the, field, the uh, kickoff because you let it go down and then you take a knee inside the five-yard line. And now you're backed up, Darrington Evans. Out to about the seven-yard line, a gain of three. And Coach Mustamp uses that second timeout on first down. I think it's playing right into the hands of South Carolina. If they can get one stop on defense, and it's been tough swinging to stop the ground gain of App State. This big interception really turned the football game. Nicholas Ross off of the deflection, finds a way into the end zone to get a defensive score, but it's been pressure. It's been batted balls at the line of scrimmage. It's been relentless against the run and then taking advantage of field position, you're able to stick it in the end zone on a quarterback run by Zach Thomas, who's been really good in orchestrating and balancing out this offense with a little bit of pass and a lot of run. The last few times out though, App State has taken their foot off the gas offensively. And now South Carolina's got a window. They get a stop here. They should have good field position. Thomas will keep it. Can't break the tackle. Green with a huge TFL. It's third and long. And another timeout by South Carolina. What a play by Sherrod Green. He doesn't lose leverage. Everybody else is going towards the running back, Evans. 
except for the guy that's responsible for the backside of setting the edge, and he just gets the shoe tops of Zach Thomas inside the five. Let's check in with Kevin Connors. All right, Kevin, big third and 11 now. South Carolina out of timeouts. But a stop here, and they get the ball back. And if you're App State, what's more important here, running the ball and using up some clock because the Gamecocks are out of timeouts or trying to pick up that first down? I think you try to do both. I think you, you run a play where you move your quarterback a little bit, try to get the first down and be aggressive. Zach Thomas will run. Got a block from Evans. Thomas taken down as he gets across the 10-yard line. A couple of yards shy of the first down. So it's fourth down for App State. They'll let this clock run under two minutes and South Carolina will get the ball back and a touchdown could win it well that was a great defensive stand by South Carolina horrible field position for Appalachian State and now they're gonna have to rely on a guy that's been very good in the kicking game to get them out of this hole Brian Edwards waits inside his own 45 Subach will punt from the end zone Fair catch called for and made at the 45-yard line. No timeouts, 55 yards to go, 150 to go in regulation. South Carolina, despite struggling for most of this game offensively, has a chance now to win it. Well, they have a chance, and they have their freshman quarterback out with, it seems like, a, a rejuvenated Brian Edwards after that last catch and run for the touchdown. I think that's where you're looking number one. That's got to be your primary target. And as a play caller, an offensive coordinator, Brian McClendon, you have to be able to move Edwards around to get him in different spaces on the field. He's lined up to the short side here on first down. And if you're App State, you've got to know the ball is coming to number 89. Lined up at the bottom of your screen. Olinsky's pass is dropped. Rico Dowdle, second and ten, five drops now for Carolina. A lot of fans have filed out. Holinsky flushed toward the sideline. And Leggett made the catch. Clock stops with 139. He got out of bounds. It's third down. Boy, that was a great effort to catch this football. Let's take another look. He catches the football there right foot down. That's an excellent catch. They will review that. Catch, the foot gets down. And then the question is, does he complete the catch? It looks like he secures this football to his chest. He had a right hand underneath the football. Right foot was down. Take another look here. This is probably our best angle. Catch there, right foot down. Does he control it through the catch? I don't think the ground, the ball's allowed to move and adjust just a little bit. I think he secures it to the ground. The ball is allowed to hit the ground as long as you don't use the ground to secure the ball. And remember, the ruling on the field was a catch. I have not seen anything to overturn that. No, I think this is going to stand. I, I think that was a great effort. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. Third down. Third and two, 139 to go. No timeouts for South Carolina. The clock will start once the ball is snapped. Brian Edwards lined up to the boundary. Could be a free play. Holinsky 
downfield for Edwards. It's intercepted. Josh Thomas has it, but this may come back. It looked like App State jumped. It sure did look like, I believe it was Demetrius Taylor that might have been in the neutral zone and may have jumped early for Appalachian State. The edge defender, it looked like it was Davis Gaither. Offside on the defense number 24. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. The game clock will start on the snap. So that turns third and two into first down and 10 for South Carolina. The ball at the 42 yard line of Appalachian State. 125 left in regulation. No timeouts for the Gamecocks. Olinsky, the true freshman, gets rid of it quickly. Incomplete behind a joiner. And by formation, South Carolina offensively trying to spread out this Appalachian State defense. No backs to the right or left. The freshman quarterback, Ryan Olinsky, he's just trying to catch, read, and throw. You got to go to the short side of the field here. Single receiver. Looking for Edwards. Ball is stripped. Holinsky able to cover it up back in midfield. Nick Hampton knocked it away. A speed rusher from Anderson, South Carolina. It's third and long. Boy, speed gets up the field. He runs right by Dylan Wanham. Gets his hand on the football. And credit Holinsky getting back on the ball. Incomplete fourth down. DeMarco Jackson, who was once offered by South Carolina. They had interest. Then they backed off when he got hurt in his senior year. That noise you hear are the Appalachian State fans that are all standing on their feet. They are one play away from taking down another Power 5 school. Holinsky scrambling gets rid of it. Dowdle breaks the tackle. What an effort. Dives across the 30. First down. Carolina still alive. And a flag is down. Two huge fourth down conversions in this quarter for South Carolina. For a team that lacked playmakers trying to make plays on offense, they sure have saved their best two for fourth quarter situations where it was either make them or go home. The officials made this call very early, but... All players of the offense were not set for one second. Therefore, it is a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Since the game clock was running, this penalty also carries a 10-second runoff. Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds. 34 seconds. The play ended with 44 seconds. Please set it to 34. So the penalty, and because we're under a minute, the runoff is in effect. And it's first and 15 for South Carolina. And Olinsky needs to be ready to snap this football, get everybody in position, because this is going to be not only beating a tough defense, but trying to beat the clock as well. Brian Edwards with a huge fourth down catch, then a touchdown on South Carolina's last drive. And then Rico Dowdle, the run after the catch to pick up the first down. 
First down. Additional 10 second runoff due to that. The correct is timed is 34 seconds. First down, South Carolina. Olinsky to the air, downfield, incomplete. After all the confusion, he went for Brian Edwards, who, remember, made maybe the catch of the year against Tennessee. Well, that's the right idea. Try to find Brian Edwards. I don't care if there's two guys on him. He's your one of the only guys offensively that can make a play to win this game right now. Twenty-seven seconds. Holinsky over the middle, broken up. Desmond Franklin, the all-conference safety. It's third down. Boy, great break on the football by Franklin. He was able to come from center field. He knew that short dig route was coming. He breaks right when Holinsky's eyes go to the right. Terrific timing. Now they have to come back on third down in South Carolina. And their young quarterback, he has to buy time with only 23 seconds left. You want to be able to get this football out quickly. They need the 20. Polinski looking for Edwards too high. And another fourth down this time with 19 seconds. Can he do it a third time? Can he find a way to get a play? That goes for 15 yards or more here on fourth with only 19 seconds remaining in this game. Carolina has kept that thing with feathers that perches in the soul alive a few times here in the waning moments of the game. App State looks like they're going to call a timeout and talk about it. A game that was a defensive slugfest for the better part of three quarters has picked up in intensity down the stretch and Appalachian State on the verge of doing it again. South Carolina trying to battle back. Nevada, San Diego State will start on ESPN News. John, the App State contingent right now might outnumber the South Carolina contingent here. Well, there's a lot of fans that travel from Boone to Columbia. And right now there's been a lot to cheer about, but they're going to have to come up with one more defensive stop against a team that twice now, late in this football game, was able to convert on long down situations. Brian Edwards at the bottom of your screen. Holinsky. Checks down again. They've got the 20. They've got the first down. It's Rico Dowdle. First and goal. The clock will momentarily stop with 11 seconds. They're going to spike the ball it. is spotted. Spike the football. Now it starts. They spike it with nine. You spike the football and you have an opportunity for two plays now with nine seconds. As again, the third time late in this game, this young quarterback has found a way to create a play. He creates in the pocket to buy himself some time, and Dowdle's just floating outside. He has plenty of green grass in front of him, makes one App State defender miss, and that was enough for the first down. Can you hit Brian Edwards on a slant or a fade? That's, that's my number one play call right now. Edwards in the slot, the closest to the line. Polinski under pressure, batted down, flag down. Six seconds. I'm not so sure why, Anish, you didn't have Edwards to the short side of the field as the single receiver. Holding on the offense, number 79. 10 yard penalty, three play, second down. And that, there's no runoff there because that would not have stopped the clock. It was an incomplete pass. Malinsky's trying to do what he can 
behind this offensive line. He's feeling pressure, getting flushed. He's lucky that ball wasn't tipped up because that ball was thrown a little bit reckless, recklessly in the middle of the field. Now you've got one shot realistically at the end zone. From the 19. And a timeout by App State. Appalachian State took a 29 lead into the fourth quarter. South Carolina. Now think about this earlier situation now. Earlier in this half, they had the ball from what, the 34-35 the Gamecocks did, elected to go for it. Didn't get it. They didn't take a field goal there. Had they, maybe They're right in position, now you've got a right. chance to kick it and win it. But they also missed the two-point conversion on the last touchdown. And again, you make that now. A field now you're, goal you have it. a chance to play extra time. You're right. Get it into overtime. But South Carolina, they've been able to move the football 144 yards in this corner, only 202 through three quarters. But the most important 19 yards. Right now on, on this down, on second down, there realistically you have one play, and you've got Edwards in the slot to the top of the screen. Olinsky with time. He's got Looking it. for six. Wide open, Edwards. It was overthrown. There is a flag down back at the 25. Brian Edwards was wide open. Partner, you called it. He could not have had a more wide open Brian Edwards. He came from the far side of the field, a drag route that was gaining depth to get into the end zone. Appalachian State lost him in coverage and the ball just carried Edwards through the back line of the end zone. Holding on the offense. That penalty is declined. The game is over. Giant killers from Boone. They brought their slingshot to Columbia and they hit again. Appalachian State with its second Power Five win of the season. First team in Sun Belt history with two wins against the Power Five and a Carolina sweep. The boys from Boone do it again. Nevada San Diego State is next on ESPN2.